you still remember each and everything that we looked at. And um, uh, this is where, okay. So, and I had given you some examples of leaves that look as if uh, their lamina are divided into leaflets, which included uh, the purple leaf, papaya. And you can see its lamina is divided, but not completely divided into leaflets. Uh, and you can see it here, it's still attached. The one of the cassava also here, you can see still attached. They don't completely divide to form small leaflets. And this is a simple leaf of the hibiscus. So that's where we ended. And today we are going to understand And what is a compound leaf? Now, a compound leaf to leaflets. Now, they are absent in the axis of the leaflets. And an example, uh, we are having the cassia leaf. This one you are seeing here, this is a cassia leaf. This is, let's count the leaflets together. We're having one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 11, then 12, 13. All are leaflets that make this entire leaf. This is the entire leaf. So for some of you are getting confused. This is not a leaf. This is a, this is one leaf, this is another leaf. No, these are called leaflets. And you can see that in between here where they're attached onto the leaf, there are no axillary buds. Uh, let me give you another example. Okay. Another example is um, a leaf. This is the entire beanie uh, leaf. Okay, not only this cow. And or this one or this one. And then, now this is the oxalis leaf. Okay. Um, you can see uh, this one here, it has three leaflets. You can count to one, two, and one, two, and three. So this is the oxalis leaf. Now, Whenever you find a leaf, whenever you find uh, a leaf with more than, with some leaflets, just know, uh, you just have to know that actually, uh, that's a compound leaf, because a compound leaf has a lamina, uh, which is completely divided into leaflets. We can go on and, and study the different types of compound leaves, okay? Uh, the first one is actually compound pinnate. Compound pinnate normally is the one like the one for cassia with uh, its, its lamina is divided into uh, these different leaflets which are opposite one another. So these are compound leaves with leaflets arranged either in pairs opposite or one another or on alternately along the midrib. Uh, the middle you can also call it the rachis. It is there. And then um, the leaf is said to be in paripinate. Uh, if, if the terminal leaf is absent. What do I mean by a terminal leaf? Now, this is a terminal leaf. Terminal means at the, ex uh, at the extreme side, uh, at the ex extreme end. So one extreme end of a leaf has this leaf, but here you can see that there is no terminal leaf. So the one, okay, if I can uh, make it clear here, this one with the terminal leaf here, uh, if it is present, it's called imparipinate leaf. And in this case where it is not there, then it is paripinate. But now you check uh, a difference between this leaf, if I can call it A, 
and then leaf B. Okay. Now leaf B is called compound by pinnate. Why? Because its leaflets are further divided to form more leaflets. But for leaf A, it is called pinnate compound uh, pinnate because it only divides its leaf only divides into a uh, leaflets. But here for by by means it too. So by pinnate, even the leaflets. Now this is one leaflet. This is another leaflet. This is another leaflet. So this leaf, its leaflet is further uh, um, divided to form more leaflets. That's why we call it by pinnate. But this one, which just forms leaflets opposite one another, it's called a uh, compound pinnate. I hope that is very clear. Then um, the, uh, an example of a compound by pinnate is the jacaranda plant. Now, this leaf I, uh, I, I picture from a jacaranda tree. If I've ever seen a jacaranda tree, you normally know, it has these small, small leaves like this. And you can see that it is compound by pinnate, that this is the entire leaf. Like this, this is the entire leaf uh, that it divides to form leaflets. But even its leaflets are further divided to form more leaflets. So this is a leaflet with more divisions to form more leaflets. Okay, now this is for the jacaranda, and these ones are called the pinnules. So the jacaranda leaf. Uh, uh, I try to also get another picture here, which makes it very clear that uh, this entire leaf is divided to form more leaflets. But even this leaflet is further divided into more leaflets, which you can call pinnules. So this is a jacaranda, uh, a jacaranda leaf which is a compound, which is a compound leaf. Then we can go to a uh, compound digitate. With a compound digitate leaf, uh, these are compound leaves with the leaflets radiating. To radiate means to come from a given point as you are moving to different directions. Coming from a given point as you are moving to different directions. So. Uh, this is and the, and in this case it forms like digits like your fingertips fingers your fingers are coming from uh, the palm radiating to different directions so with the compound digitate um the leaflets radiate out from the end of the petiole like fingers of the hand and you can see it here you're having uh, one leaflet here, another one, another one, another one, another one. So like just like digits of the hand. You can see if you can compare this one uh, with the one of cassava. If we can go to the one of cassava. I want you to take note that in cassava here, it did not divide completely. It's still intact here. Okay, it did not divide completely. But uh, if you can look at this, this one divides completely. That's why the cassava leaf is a simple leaf. And, uh, <clears throat> and um, this uh, leaf is not simple because a difference between a simple leaf and a compound leaf is a simple leaf, it's lamina that's not divided into leaflets, but for a compound leaf, it's lamina is divided into, um, okay, for a compound leaf, I've just said it's lamina is divided into leaflets, okay. Divided into leaflets, uh, leaves. Okay, um, so with compound trifoliate leaves, these leaves form three leaflets. And the most common example is the one from the bini. Plant. 
And you can see if for some of you have never seen bean, bean leaves, this is it. Uh, the entire bean leaf is going to here. And then this is the entire bean leaf. It has three leaf, leaf. Uh, it compound try for strawberry. If you have ever uh, eaten this strawberry, this is its leaf. Okay, the strawberry leaf. It is also compound trifoliate. Another one is the oxalis. Oxalis in Lugana is called Kanyewa. A Kanyewa plant. If I can show you this picture of Kanyewa, these ones here. People used to eat Kanyewa, especially young children. They chew these leaves, uh, which are called Kanyewa. So this uh, plant called Kanyewa in Luganda, in English it is called Oxalis. Okay. It also has three leaflets. It also has three leaflets. So it is compound trifoliate. When they ask for an example of a, a compound trifoliate leaf, you are able to give oxalis or strawberry or beans or so and so on and so forth. Now, uh, if you have understood, uh, let us try to, to do some of these questions. Okay, uh, of course, uh, wait, I didn't label them well. So uh, let me call this one one. Question one, uh, question two, uh, question three. Uh, yes, I'm seeing Lillian. Yes, Lillian. I'm answering number one. Yes, please read for us the question and you answer, you give us the answer. Which one of the following plants has leaves with parallel leaf venation? Mm -hmm. B, maize, maize plants. Okay, why do you say maize plant? <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, the maize plant has parallel veins. That is correct. Uh, but maybe you could answer why, what do we mean by uh, parallel leaf veins? Those are veins which never meet. Uh, they never meet, but for network, they meet and form a network. Now we can go to another. We are seeing, I'm seeing uh, Shina, Sherina. Yes, Shina. Uh, when I ask you to unmute, you please unmute very fast. But if you don't unmute. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, Marvin. Uh, you must for number. Yes, do number two. Okay. The answer is C. Okay. Uh, number two says, which of the following tissues has a protective function in plants? That is the epidermis. Okay, thank you very much, Marvin. Yeah, because we had looked at it under the structure of the leaf. Uh, then I'm seeing we are having the leaves. Yes, Liz. I'm going to answer number three. Yes, read for us the question. The figure below the the figure below shows a leaf type. Which type of leaf is shown in the diagram above, in the figure above? I think it's compound mm. trifoliate, part C. Okay, thank you. Why, why, why do you think it is compound trifoliate? Because it has three leaflets. Because, yes, Liz. Um, because it has three leaflets. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so its leaf or its lamina is divided into three leaflets. Thank you very much, Liz. Uh, let us go to uh, another. Um, we are having another question. Call it question four. I'm seeing Ida. Yes, Ida. Yes, 
Aida, um, yes, please read for us the question and you give us the answer. For for only DC. Uh huh. For only what? For only four, which I've labeled four here. Yes. What is the leaf labeled? Roman one. Uh huh. Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Aida. It is compound. Uh, digitate. Yes. It's compound. Digitate. Thank you very much, Aida. Okay, let's uh, choose Derek. Yes, Derek. Uh, when I choose you, please, you unmute very fast. And then, hey, you give us the answer. Yeah, Derek has disappeared. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So which one? Uh, number five says, leaf labeled three is a uh, uh, Sherina. Yes, Sherina. Uh, uh, for leaf labor three, it is here. What well, you are calling it simple palmet, Sherina. Okay, let's let's use another. And now, for some of you who refuse to. Rename. Well, guys, for example, I'm seeing there's someone here <clears throat> called Galaxy Tabu. You should name yourself. What? Because each one of you has a name. Yes, Isabella. The leaf labeled Roman numeral three is. Compound by is compound, compound what? By pine. Compound by pine. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Isabella. <clears throat> Actually, is, is right. Here, number five, there is no correct answer. You can't call it compound digitate. You can't call it compound palmet. Simple palmet. You can't call it trifoliate. You can't call it compound. Palmate. There is no correct answer. And so Isabella has given us for a compound by pinet, even if leaflets are further divided to form more leaflets. Then we can go to number six. Six. Uh, I'm seeing Derek Mugisha. Yes, Derek Mugisha. When I ask you to unmute, you unmute and you give us the answer. Derek Mugisha, give us the answer. Compound digitate. Okay, Derek Mugisha says. Which, which one are you doing? Derek Roman Mugisha, which question are you Which of the. Uh, Roman, for your sake. Mm -hmm. Read for us the question. Which of the structures in three above is a simple pi by pyramid? Is it simple? Pyramid. Uh huh. And what is your answer? Derek Mugisha. Yes, please. Uh, yes, what is the answer? What is your answer then? I was giving Roman three. Mm -hmm. Roman okay. three. Roman three. Okay, Roman three. Uh, Roman three. Actually, Roman three is not a simple leaf. 
um, Gisha, and I told you what a simple leaf is. This has never been a simple leaf. Okay, uh, let me choose another person here. I'm having Cravens. Yes, Cravens. It's uh, C, Roman 2. Roman 2, yes. Yeah, and uh, we are saying Roman 2 because it's, it's actually the only simple leaf there. It's the only simple leaf there. The rest are compound. Remember, the difference between a simple and a compound leaf is the one with a simple leaf, it's a lamina, that is its entire leaf surface, is not divided into leaflets, C. But for a compound leaf, its lamina, that is entire leaf surface, is divided into leaflets, is divided into leaflets. And I want to, let me run this very fast again so that you can see. This one, the entire leaf is what I've circled, but you can see that they are small, small leaflets. These are leaflets. These are leaflets. Uh, this one has leaflets. This one has leaflets. All these ones are compound, but of course they, they are different types. Hmm? The, these are a compound. These are small, small leaflets. And then uh, when you look at in this picture, now this picture B, Eh? This is a simple because it's not divided into leaflets, much as its lamina is divided. Uh, C is a simple leaf. Its lamina is not divided into leaflets. D is a simple leaf. Its lamina is not divided into leaflets. But the E is a compound because its entire lamina is divided into leaflets. Even A, its lamina is divided into leaflets, but these ones are not. And I even gave you more examples. Hmm? This one is a compound. This one is a compound. This one is a compound. The compound. This one is a simple. It's a simple one. This one is simple. This one is simple. So I want you to please take note of those differences. And um, you can see, I even give you an example of more simple leaves whose lamina are divided, but not in two leaflets. So this one is a, a pop. Leaf. You can see that here it is still eater of cassava because these are the ones which might distribute uh, disturb uh, students and they, they fail to understand. Okay, uh, so I hope you guys are, are now comfortable with what I mean by simple. And compound leaf. Now let me look at leaf margini. For a margin like this, think of a leaf which is like that. Now this is its margin. That is the end where uh, the leaf surface ends. That's its margin. And we have different types of leaf margins. Uh, uh, the first one is a uh, entire margin, okay? Now here them is smooth without indentations of any kind. For example, in the mango leaf, what I've just drawn here, is a simple margin because it's just entire smooth margin. The margin has indentations pointing towards the apex. And this is how, it, uh, if I'm assuming this is the apex of the leaf. So you are going to have a leaf apex. Uh -huh, let me draw more. They point towards the apex. So if you ever find a leaf which has those kinds of uh, margins, just know that that is serrated uh, margin. Then it dented, the indentations just pointing towards the petiole. Now, this is the petiole, this is the apex. So apex is here, the apex, and then petiole or stalk. Petiole is there, okay? Uh, so, you, if you find a leaf, the indentations which look like that, they are pointing downward towards the apex. Okay, that is dented margin. Then there are some with the crenet. Uh, 
crenate, they just they are just small. Those are crenates. Those are uh, the crenate, 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 crenate. So if you, you find such a leaf, which looks like that, that's going to be crenate margin. It has a crenate margin. Okay. And then lobed margin is one with those lobes like that it would be a lobed margin, uh, the margins. So these are the lobed ones, okay? Now, uh, in, in summary, you can see this is entire, entire. Uh, we have a granulate when there are so, so many, serrated looking up, uh, dented like that, just uh, like uh, teeth, they look like teeth, okay, pointing uh, like that. Then uh, granite, dented. And I was able to even pick some leaves here. You can see uh, this leaf is, is going to be say serenade. This leaf is lobed. This leaf is entire. You see? Dented. So all these ones you should be able. Now, what do we study? at the end of it all, when we are looking at leaves, we look at what we call a dichotomous key, okay? A, we look at what we call a dichotomous key. And in this lesson, I am going to teach you how to construct a dichotomous key. Actually, another name for a, a, a dichotomous key, you can call it an identification key. Uh, let me put the word here. I T F K Asian identification key because it is the one that uh, teaches us to classify. When we are classifying, we are actually grouping different objects or different organisms into various groups, basing on observable what you can see clearly observable characteristics okay now normally a long time ago when we were teaching the dichotomous key we would first draw a flow chart okay you first draw a chart but it is no longer required as long as you can, as long as you can identify observable, you can be able to construct a dichotomous key. Now, when we are constructing a dichotomous key, hmm, you begin by writing what we call couplets. Now, a couplet, these are big letters with uh, small subsections of A and B, like that. So you have A, A and B. We are calling them couplets because they are made up of two, two portions of them, which is A and B, A and B. Because a couple, I think you guys know what a couple is. A couple just means two things that are put together. That's a couple. A, a couple, when they say you guys are a couple, it means you, you are two. They were two who are together. Okay. Now, uh, when we are writing or identifying them, we call them, we identify them not by their names. We don't call them by their names, but we call them by, uh, we call them specimen. We call them specimen. And then um, when you look at these two, okay, let me uh, right here features which we are going to use to uh observable characteristics observable 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 characteristics character 
characteristics. Now I'm going to uh, begin choosing you people to tell me observable characteristics which you can see uh, flowers. Uh, can you please raise your hands and um, you tell me what observable characteristics are you able to identify from the specimen above? Uh, what observable characteristics uh, can you be able to identify? I'm going to begin with Flavia. Yes, Flavia. Uh -huh. Flavia, I've asked you to unmute. You please tell us one of the characteristics. Some leaves are compound, others are simple. That you have seen. Some leaves are compound, others are simple leaves. Okay, uh, Flavia, how have you known that some are simple and some are, are, are compound? How have you known, Flavia? Some leaves are the, uh, the major when it has different leaflet. Okay, and then some, are, some others? Some of the leaves, they, are ju they just have one leaflet, like it's just one leaf. Okay, which means that uh, they are lamina. You know what a lamina is? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So that means they are lamina. Some are divided and some are not divided. Not so? Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Flavia. Uh, so let me write Flavia's answer. Uh, sorry for that. Let me write Flavia's answer. So we shall use one, one character as lamina. We shall use lamina because some have a divided lamina. Now with that, uh, lamina divided, divided, all not divided. All not divided. So that is one observable characteristic that we have seen. In. Uh, another one, Maureen. Yes, Maureen. Uh, Maureen has disappeared. Uh, Agnes. Yes, Agnes. I'm sorry, teacher. <laughs> I was lost somewhere. Um, my point is, yes, uh, Agnes. some leaves have a leaf venation, okay. and others have a network leaf mm. venation. Wow, thank you so very can much. You, I mean, I can't hear you. Yes. Yeah, uh, for me, I can hear you How about now. Can you hear me? It's in a low, low tone, and I can't hear you very well. Uh, maybe you need to increase the volume of your gadget because okay, uh, many me people try. can hear me. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, leaf venation. So, leaf veins. So, that's uh, Agnes's point. Leaf veins. Some have parallel. Uh, para. Uh, parallel. And then others. Network. Uh, I'll not complete that. Network. Then we are having uh, Vivian. Yes, Vivian. Yes. Some leaves have. I don't. Some have leaves. So. And others and have other. which one? Hollow. Hollow. Hey, hey. Hey, like which one? This one. Hey, by the way, I like your answer. Hey, but we can modify it. This one has this one has a leaf sheath. This one, which looks like a, a layer, the, especially the one which is found in grasses, is called a leaf sheath. But this one, this is called a petiole. So leaf sheath. Leaf sheath. Uh, slash, all others are going to be having a petiole. Uh, petiole. OK. Uh -huh. Let me choose another. Uh, thank you, Vivian. I'm saying Nachi Rahma. 
Yes, Nachi Indi. Just some leaves are compound and others are simple leaves. How have you known that some are compound and others are simple? Romani yes, B. No. Romani B is a compound mm. leaf. And Romani C. Romani C is a simple leaf. Romani C, its lamina is How not divided. How have compound leaf? Yeah. Romani How B. Hey. Its, lamin, it's, its lamina is divided into leaflets. Uh -huh. And then Roman C, its lamina is not divided completely. Mm? Thank you very much. That's a, a very good point. Uh, okay, thank you. Hey, and you can see why I uh, recorded it first here. Uh, then I'm seeing um, which other, which other you guys have just been able to see. They they have uh, different margins. Uh -huh, margins, yes, Agnes. Uh, Derek Mugisha, you raise your. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, which answer do you have? Do you have? Some leaves has a round apex, while others has a pointed apex. Okay. But which one has a round apex? It's like as if all the apexes are kind of pointed. Hmm? Uh, then Liz, yes, Liz. I have a question. Please ask Liz. I can't actually observe the leaf that has a para leaf venation according to the diagrams. Uh, have you looked at leaf A? Yes. A. Leaf A, don't you see these? Uh, are you seeing those ones? Yes. Are you seeing them? Yes. Uh, how would you call those kind of veins? Pearl veins. Okay, so have you seen it now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other question? No. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, um, of course, uh, for the because these are pictures, right? normally, by the way, this is uh, an exam that is specifically mostly for practicals, okay? Uh, let me end with Vivian and then we construct our dichotomasky. Yes, Vivian. Tisha, can you also use the smoothness and roughness of the lamina? Very good. You can do it. Hey, you can because it's 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 observable. You can feel it. Hey, we can use that is we call it texture. So whether the texture is smooth or rough. But of course, for now, since you're not having the specimen. Uh, it may be hard for you to feel whether a, a leaf is smooth or rough. Okay. Another feature which I've seen you guys have not uh, looked at. Are you seeing visible hairs? Hairs of boya. Things of boya. Okay. So some uh, may be hairy and some may not be hairy. But let us use these ones which are very much clear. Okay. So let us, uh, we are going to first begin with lamina. So here you write specimen, because with the, the dichotomous key, you choose a feature which is going to separate off one by one, one by one, one grouping them. So here you can say specimen, specimen with the uh, divided the lamina. 
divided the uh, lamina. Uh, which ones have, we use dots, which ones have divided lamina? We're having um, uh, C has a divided lamina and B. And then a specimen with the undivided lamina over with the lamina not divided, we're having A and D. So the moment you have more than one specimen, you send it to the next couplet. So specimen with divided lamina, there are more than one. So I, I can say let them go to, okay? And then here, these dots mean go to, go to, to. Now uh, here I can say specimen, specimen with the, uh, with any divided lamina, any divided lamina, specimen with undivided lamina. I say go to, go to three. Now that means when I come to two, I should only look at those two and separate them, those ones which are having a, a divided lamina. And in that case, we are going to be looking at uh, B and, and C. So now you begin looking at both and you compare. Now, which characteristic can I use to separate both? Okay. Uh, which characteristic can I use uh, to, to separate both? I can uh, still use the lamina because we can be allowed to use one character more than only two times, not more than two. So I can use the one again of lamina to say that specimen with the divided lamina into leaflets uh, and then specimen with the lamina not divided into leaflets. And then I can separate off both B and then C. Uh, can I use veins? No, they all have network veins. Can I use sheath? They all have petiole. Can I use margin? It's, uh, for some of these, it's not good to use margin because they don't have, it's almost say, uh, forming uh, leaflets. So it's not easy to, to go for its texture. We don't have the leaves to fill them. So we can use again divided lamina. And then we can say uh, specimen with lamina divided. And now I'm, because of the space here, I'm not going to rewrite the word specimen. Okay, I'm not going to rewrite them because of space here. So I can write with uh, uh, lamina divided into leaflets. Lamina divided uh divide into leaflets it's what uh, i put my dots it is b we just put the letter don't need to put any and then uh specimen with lamina not divided into leaflets so lamina Uh, not divided, not divided, I mean, are not divided into leaflets. Into, into leaflets. It is C. You put those dots and you put C. Okay. Now, there we have identified them because this is an identification key. So when I give you a cluster of this specimen, I just come and I read this specimen, lamina divided into leaflets, not divided. So I can be able to distinguish between the two. Then I can go to 3D. Uh, this one sent me to 3D whereby I'm looking at specimen with undivided lamina. So we are having A and B. Uh, if I can use a different pen for easy identification, so I am I'm now going to compare, uh, that is A and B. I'm now comparing A and B. And what is there? Uh, I can decide to use margin, okay? To say because A has 
uh, an entire margin or a smooth margin. Uh, D has a serrated margin, okay? I can decide to use network veins. A has network veins, and then D has, uh, uh, sorry, A has parallel veins, uh, D has network veins. I can also use that. I can use hairs, A has hairs, D has no hairs, you see? So we can separate uh, in many ways, uh, but me, let me use, decide to use uh, margin. So specimen, uh, specimen with the, specimen with the entire margin, uh, with entire margin, specimen with the entire margin, it is A. Then specimen, specimen with the uh, serrated, specimen with serrated uh, margin, uh, specimen with serrated margin, it is D. I think you can see here you'll be able to get your marks very well you'll be able to get your marks very well, okay? And this is how we construct a dichotomous key. This is how we construct a dichotomous key. It is highly examinable. Uh, let me first, first pick some questions here. One from Vivian. Yes, Vivian. Uh, yes, Vivian, you have a question? Uh, when I ask you to unmute, you unmute very fast, and then you, you give your view. Teacher, uh -huh. yes. I'm wondering why, why you've only used three numbers, yet they're like four specimens. Thank you for that question, Vivian. Now, for a dichotomous key, actually, when you are given a, a given number of specimens, you, for you to get to know the number of couplets that you use, you subtract one. If you are given five specimen, it means you use four couplets. If you are given seven specimen, it means you use six couplets. If you are given three specimen, it means you use two couplets. Now, in this case, we are given uh, four specimen, so we use three couplets. Okay, I hope I've answered you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm seeing another question from Kasuti. Yes, Kasuti. Excuse me, teacher. I just wanted to yes. ask, like, are you going to send this work to the Google Classroom? Because in most classes, when I check, there is no work. Are you sure? Yes. OK. Um, because I had sent this entire document, uh, the previous session that we had, uh, hey, we opened. OK, I'm going to upload this very PowerPoint today there. Okay. So I had uh, presumed that I had sent it already. So I'm going to uh, upload it again. Uh, yes, Marvin, you have a question? Excuse me, teacher. I wanted to ask why, why uh, do you have to, to subtract one from the specimen that they have given you? Is it like a must to always subtract one? Yes, it is a must, and that's how we, we do it. Okay. It's a must. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, let me see if there are more questions. Uh, I'm seeing Nachi Yinji. Yes, Nachi Yinji. Teacher, why did you say that specimen with divided lamina go to two and the specimen with undivided lamina go to three? Which is two and which is three, teach? The two is this, that is the second couplet mm. and the three means the third couplet. We use this number one to compare two and three. Aha, uh -huh. it depends. You can, mm. actually that's what we do. So first of all, if you have four specimen, you write down the, that you're supposed to have three couplets. So that's why I first wrote the three couplets. 
And then for mm -hmm. one, you begin uh, grouping them differently and sending some to the next side that you can further uh, separate them further in different numbers. I don't know whether you're getting it. Yes. Yeah. Is there any other question in that change concerning? That, that's why we separated the C and the D from A and D. That's why we separated the C, eh? A. C and the B, B. from A. A and D. Oh. Yes. Okay. Actually, uh, when you understand further, uh, the you name question, sometimes they can even tell you to separate them in alphabetical order. For example, they can tell you to use characters which are going to separate them, and you first separate A, then B. So you can get a, a, a character actually to separate A and B at the same number here. For example, having A and B. A. And then at, on couple of three, you separate C and D. You can also do that. Actually, a, a dichotomous key is not supposed to be the same for the entire class. And if in, in the case, examined and the entire class had the same dichotomous key it is automatic with the UNEBU people that you guys cheated and your exams would be withheld because that would be an indicator of malpractice there is no way because when i you see how i've drawn my dichotomous key someone else can do it differently but as long as they are following the same principles of writing the couplets as they're supposed to be and separating them out. There is no way of how you can think of uh, using the lamina first uh, as at least if you are, let's say, 100 students. There's no way. Get it. So yeah. you can use different characteristics. For me, that's what I've chosen. Yes, Marvin. Uh, Marvin, you have a question? When I ask you to unmute and you raise your hand, you unmute very fast. And then you say the question. Uh, I, I have no question. I forgot to lower the hand. Hey, okay. Uh, okay, let me end with Mugisha and then I show you. The... Yes, uh, Mugisha. Excuse me, teacher. Teacher. Yes. Yes. Oh, to ask on number one B. Yes, you please. are saying specimen without with undefined lamina. Mm. Number six. Hey, I thought you were supposed to talk about specimen with undivided lamina. Oh, uh -huh. thank you very much um, uh, for that question. Now, mm. here, uh, part B mm. said specimen with undivided lamina. And I send yes. them to three. And, uh, and three, so we are having both A and D. So you can see that both A and D, their lamina is not divided. So those are the ones that fit there. So I am free to choose any other character that can separate both. And uh, here I chose margin, but you can also choose network veins. For example, this one has network veins, sorry, parallel veins. A has network parallel veins and D has network veins. You get it? Yes. So now yeah. since, you were, since you are going to use that margin, why, mm. didn't you, why didn't you write specimen entire margin on number B3? Now uh, for each couplet, uh, mm. Marvin, you are supposed to use the same character when you are separating both oh. for, for each couplet we use the same characteristic and that's why for, 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 couple, for number one we use the lamina being divided mm. and undivided for number two we use the uh, still uh, again we use yeah. the for number three we use the margin okay so for each couplet mm. we use the same character when we are separating we do not mix more than uh, one uh, character. For example, I cannot say a specimen yes, with lamina here and then here I use margin. Yes, in the back. Yeah, now, that's what I, was, 
I was lost here on number B because it was talking about undivided lamina. So when hey. we, started, we started talking about margin. Hey, but have you now gotten it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, now, uh, because of time, I was going to give you this assignment. Uh, this was a question which came in your name 2009, paper two, which is practical. And we're given these different leaves, okay? Uh, so I'm going to upload this PowerPoint in Google Classroom. You'll be able to access it. Uh, anyways, because of time, thank you very much. Goodbye and enjoy yourselves. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> You first to go back to my drive.